Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. I'm going to be honest here. I'm a big old softy for classic Disney, okay? Beauty and the Beast from 1991, the first animated film to be nominated for the Oscar for Best Picture, and the first Disney film to be adapted into a hit Broadway musical is certainly classic Disney. So I must admit, when I first heard this film announced, especially given the track record of Disney's live action adaptations of their animated classics of late, I was excited. Then my excitement started to waver a little bit when the previews seemed to indicate that this was going to be almost a note-for-note -note remake. And I started to do a little nitpicking. Oh, look, the Beast's CGI face looked all kinds of wrong. Oh, there's apparently a bunch of new songs in this one. But none of the outstanding songs that they added for the Broadway version add to that that the term live-action remake is something of a misnomer here, since movies these days have so much green screen CGI that certain scenes, like Belle's yearning refrain sung from a hilltop, or the classic production number Be Our Guest may as well be referred to as animated scenes. So, as much as I love the source material, I found myself approaching this remake with a little bit of trepidation, wondering to myself, hey, do we really need this if it's not a fresh take? Sure, they made some changes here and there, sanding off the original story's roughest edges, but nothing on the level of Branagh's non-musical version of Cinderella, or John Favreau's jaw-dropping The Jungle Book, or even Tim Burton's nutty Alice in Wonderland. And during the first, uh, about ten minutes of this movie, my opinion was only reinforced. I love the story, love the music, but it's exactly what I expected it to be. Then the differences started coming along one after another. A new song for Kevin Klein as Bill's father Maurice was bland but mercifully short, and were supplied with some unnecessary backstory regarding Bill's mother which doesn't quite pay off, and only serves to make the movie a little overlong at just over two hours. But, 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 a funny thing happened. Slowly, surely, and almost as soon as the primary action shifts to the location of the Beast's castle, this movie kind of won me over, the same way that the original won me over in 1991. First of all, that castle is a triumph of production design, with its illogical and twisted architecture as a result of the spell which has transformed the residents into household items. One of those items, Cogsworth, is also a triumph of design. Now the facial expressions they were able to match with Ian McKellen's dour voice make Cogsworth more endearing to me than he's ever been. And as for Beast, well, the best thing I can say is that Beast's face doesn't look all that bad, at least not in every shot. Dan Stevens is able to imbue him with charm and wit, and his progression from foul-tempered jailer to empathetic savior is actually pretty delightful to watch. Credit is also ultimately due to some of those minor rewrites. Things that never quite made sense or didn't quite feel morally justified in the original version have been sort of explained, made smoother, and fleshed out. Now the progression of the love story just feels more natural, and when augmented by the classic music that we already love, we'll manage to sweep you off your feet all over again. Now, do all of the additions work? Well, no, especially not the one that's getting all the press lately. That revision that makes the character of LeFou gay, not only does it not have much impact on the story, and therefore just feels sort of shoehorned in, it's not even overt enough to really get mad over. You know, if you're the type of person that gets mad over things like that. Now, before I go, I have to mention that the MVP of this movie is absolutely Luke Evans as Gaston. His character is a tricky one, and not only does Evans pull it off, he manages to turn the bumbling vain brute from the animated film into a slick and captivating rogue who is capable, ultimately, of real evil. And by the time he fired up a torch and led the villagers through the woods singing the climactic mob song, I was fully on board, all nitpicks were forgotten, and I was completely wrapped up, once again, in an effectively told tale as old as time. I award Beauty and the Beast a large bag of popcorn. It's not the best of the recent Disney live-action remakes, but it certainly manages the impressive feat of brushing the pixie dust off of the original and tinkering with it just enough to make this classic tale bloom again, to delight and enchant a whole new generation. Well, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the live action Beauty and the Beast in the comments as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching, I'm the Colonel, and I'm especially good at expectorating. <laughs>